Hello everyone, Guy in the Shell here. In this video, we'll do an introduction to image forensics. We'll work with the JPEG image format. We'll use this rather simple example to gain some knowledge on the file format itself and on some tools that might be useful for such challenges. Let's dig into it. For this challenge, I have prepared an image and I've hidden three flags inside. The first thing we'll talk about is EXIF. EXIF is a data format to store metadata. JPEG can have EXIF embedded in them. Typically, digital camera will record a number of values in the EXIF metadata to store the image capture time, maybe the location, the camera setup, things like that. So let's have a look. We'll use a tool that is called EXIF tool. This is a tool that is used to read and write meta information in file. If we launch it without our argument on the image, we get a long list of fields and their values that is stored in the file. That's a lot of information. In order not to browse everything manually, let's try to simply grab into it to see if we can find a flag. CTF challenges often tell you what the flag looks like, which makes it easier to find. I have called all my flags something that starts with flag with a capital F. So let's just launch that. And here you go. There is actually a flag there. I want to note one thing though. EXIF are not meant to be hidden. Image manipulation tool will show you those fields. I put a flag there just for the example, but it's not really hidden, right? So let's look at another way to find this same flag. If you open the file in a text editor, we obviously get a lot of garbage. This is because the file is a binary file, not a text file. So the data it contains is not meant to be interpreted as ASCII characters. But still, we can see some text there, right? Yeah, so there are two reasons for that. First, because we open the file in a text editor, the editor tries to interpret everything as ASCII. You remember from my previous videos, a byte can contain any number from 0 to 255. And in the ASCII table, the numbers from 32 to 126 are printable characters. So from time to time, in a binary file, a byte will have a value that can be interpreted as a ASCII character. Doesn't mean that it should, though. The second reason is that in some part of the file, you might actually store ASCII data. For example, inside the JPEG, some of the EXIF data is actually stored in ASCII. That means that our flag 1 is actually readable inside the file. Here it is. It's interesting to know, but it's not very practical with the text editor because the file is very large. So it's time to introduce a tool. And that tool is called Strings. So Strings is very simple and it does basically the same thing as the text editor. It reads the file and tries to interpret everything as ASCII. And then it applies a very basic filter. It will output only the part of the file where you can see several consecutive printable characters. That is to say, it's trying to extract meaningful text that is meant to be interpreted as ASCII and tries to forget about the rest. Since it is unlikely that random data will form long chain of consecutive ASCII characters, one can hope that it will return mostly interesting chunks of the file. So let's put it in action. Okay, so it does return a lot. So it's due to the default setup, returning as soon as it finds four consecutive printable characters. That's not very restrictive. On a large file, it's probable we'll get a lot of those occurrences and most won't mean anything. If we are confident that our flag is longer, we can pass a parameter. We'll only ask for string of at least 10 consecutive printable characters. And we'll paginate that. And here it is we find our flag again. So, yeah, that's interesting. So string is a neat little tool to have in your arsenal when you are doing CTF. Let's look for flag 2 now. Back to EXIF tool. So there is a lot of data, but not that much, so we can browse it a bit manually. We have, found, we have seen that with the grep, we did not see any other obvious flag. But when I browse this uh, list of EXIF values, I see that it's a long string of uh, only alphanumeric characters that look random. And when I see something like that, it screams base64. 
Base64 is a data encoding format. I'll do a video on it. It's not guaranteed that this string is Base64, but it does not hurt to try and decode it. There is a simple tool that is called Base64. It encodes or decodes an input file to an output file. By default, it uses std in and std out. So let's pipe the value we just found into base64 in decode mode dash d. And voila, we have a second flag. Nice, right? So this one was a bit more hidden. Okay, so we are only one flag left uh, and this one is a bit more hidden. Believe me when I say that looking longer into the exif output and the strings output we generated earlier will not reveal it. Well, the strings might, but I have uh, made it such that the flag is very small, so it's really not going to be obvious to find. So for this last flag, we'll have to dig a bit deeper into file formats. In our case, we are dealing with JPEG. Let's look at how the format is defined. The Wikipedia page on JPEG tells us that. We go to syntax and structure, and here we get some things. So in particular, we see that there are markers in the file that are introduced by 0FF that indicate how to interpret part of the file. We see that the file image data sl starts at FFDA, and we see that the file data ends at FFD9. And here with this FFD9 thing, we found the particularity of JPEG. There is an end marker. What's interesting is that image readers will ignore anything after this end marker. So let's open our file and look for the end marker. For that, we'll look at the file in hexadecimal. I use Vim with XXD and I do it something like that, XXD. That gives me the file in hexadecimal. Let's search for FFD9, FFD9. Okay, so I go to the end of the file and, well, I don't see anything there. I can go back up a bit. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So I, I, I don't seem to find this end marker. Okay, what's happening there? So the problem here is that the way I use this editor, bytes are grouped by two. But there is no telling that the bytes I'm looking for, FF and D9, will be grouped together. In this representation that we see here, two consecutive bytes can be in the same group of four, or in two different groups, separated by a space, or worse, we could have FF here and D9 here. So it's not very practical to search for it. To circumvent that, I can either look for FF and hope that I'll find it easily what I want. I can craft a much more complicated search expression. I can read the file without outputting the address on the left and the ASCII fluff on the right. Or I can use another tool that understands what we manipulate here are bytes and that provides help. Xfind, for example, is such a tool. So let's go there. With Xfind, I have to leave my beloved terminal, but I get the best experience. I can search only full bytes. So here I can go and find, and I can do FF and D9. And it will look only for complete byte, and you see that it doesn't care that there might be space in its representation, it finds everything. And if I try to go to the end of the file, I should find some FFD9. Well, unfortunately, it's not outputting it. Can I? Yes, I can find some FFD9 that are hmm, very tricky, separated by a new line in this very particular representation. So it's really helping to have this tool. And also, if you want to edit, it only allows you to edit with full bytes. It will not accept uh, half bytes input. So it keeps your file very consistent. So this tool is pretty neat. But let's look, let's look at another way. OK, so let's go back to Vim and see if we can use XXD in a different manner. So we will use XXD this time, but without the, the fluff, without the address and the ASCII on either side. Okay, so we get a large list of hexadecimal values, so we can search for FFD9. Now, it's still not perfect, so we find some FFD9s, but if we look here, for example, this is not aligned on any byte. So the, byte we, the bytes we are looking at right now are 4F, FD, and 9E. It's actually not FFD9. 
And this is a mistake that Xfin would not do because it understands the bytes. Here, it just understands text the way I'm using it, so I'm not finding it. But anyway, if we were looking to the end of the um, file, we would see this FFD9. It might have been split on the uh, on the new line, but it would have been uh, consecutive like that. So it's it makes it easier. And if we go back to the representation we started with, without with the address and the the ASCII, and now that we know that it's at the end, we can find that it was there actually FF and D9. Okay, and even just looking for FF would have been a, a bit weird because. In this particular case, when we go at the end of the file, we see the, the EFF that is highlighted is this one, but there is actually an FF that is the right one, which is there. So, yeah, in this case, XFIN was really practical to find what we were looking for. So let's go back to uh, XFIN. Okay, so we have found this FFD9, okay, and we see that there is indeed some data afterwards. Okay, that's interesting. So there is a string uh, afterwards. Right, so I can select it here. So there is some uh, some um, end character here. That's a new line, and it finishes with a new line also. But in the middle, I have some uh, ASCII characters. Hmm. And you know what? That's interesting. That looks again like big sixty four. Let's try that. Oops. And let's do echo our values. Base sixty four dash d. Oh, well, we have found our third flag. So that's very interesting, right? So to conclude, a few things to remember. Strings is a very practical tool. When you see large alphanumeric random looking strings, think base64, doesn't hurt, just try. Have an hexadecimal reader or two that you know how to use. It's gonna be practical. And make sure to do your research. Today, for example, it was about the structure of a JPEG, but other file formats and other things will have different properties that you might choose to hide data, and you should be able to look for how those things are structured so that you can reverse engineer them. And that's it for today. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.